Hey everyone! <laughs> Hello, good morning! It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue um, for our, here for Cricket Chat on our Thanksgiving Eve. How come nobody calls it Thanksgiving Eve? Like they call it Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, but they don't call it Thanksgiving Eve. I don't know. But um, so here we are the day before Thanksgiving. I already have my tree up, but it's not decorated. It's just up because I bought, I got a great deal on it um, at Michael's. And so I, good morning, everyone. So I decided that I would put it up. It was still in the box, but I haven't decorated it. And I thought tomorrow after dinner, because we're just having a small dinner with just my son and my sister that um, maybe we could decorate it if we're not too stuffed. <laughs> stuffed. What are you guys doing tomorrow? I hope you're going to try to stay home and um, happy Thanksgiving Eve, Laurie Jo. We can make, we can start that, you know, like that's how things like that get started. Hey, stop that. Oh, once again, the dogs are crazy, um, and Benji's eating something uh, uh, behind me, and Teddy Bear is squeaking. Um, yeah, great morning. It's a little dark, a little gray, but, um, okay, get away from that. Don't eat that. Uh, <laughs> it's a little gray, but we are going to brighten it up this morning, because we're going to make the most adorable um ornaments i'm going to show them to you in just a second there these are um these are rosettes do you know what a rosette is hi susan oh well just the hubby that's kind of romantic um that's nice so this is a rosette this here part of this and this is an ornament made with a rosette um and actually snowflake themed um <laughs> i hear your your maker going oh a lot of people just just their immediate family which is fine <laughs> cow dogs we're gonna do i think we're gonna do a countdown for christmas so that will be fun for them hi dorothy and so here are these rosettes they come in three different sizes um and i used a just a Cricut paper, but you don't have to use that. As I mentioned, uh, someone asked me yesterday what my favorite colors were and pink and green. So I just love this particular paper that, um, that I got from Cricut. It's called Mod and Mary, and it is from this brand hostess with the mostest but you don't have to use that obviously but when I saw these ornaments on the front of this paper I thought oh my goodness um I need to make those ornaments and lo and behold um I found the the project in Cricut Project so I want to show you um what what they are, where you can find them, how you can make them. Um, and these are just so much fun to make. I've been making them since yesterday and I haven't stopped. I decided that I have several trees actually, and I have one that's flocked with snow that I don't have a whole lot of like, um, uh, ornaments for last year I decorated with all the ornaments I made um, on my page you know Miss Reader to the Rescue page but I think this year I will just put these snowflake ornaments on there I think that would be kind of fun it's like a snow flocked tree so snowflakes would be kind of fun um, and okay so let's get started I want I don't want to take up too much time today and then because um, I want to show you how how to put these together there is one little tricky part and i'm going to show you um how to do it it's the rosette it's the tricky part but it's not undoable you can do this okay so let's first go to projects 
And under projects, you can um, either do a search for snowflake or you can do this uh, drop down box and choose Christmas. And you'll notice that it has uh, just a ton and ton of really fun projects. And here's the one that we want to do. It's called the Rosette Snowflake Ornament Set. So there are three, um, three different sizes and and actually different shapes they're they're not like just the same one in three different sizes they're slightly different um now uh, yeah and so what i wanted to tell you is um to make these you need just a few pieces of paper and um so i used this patterned paper you need for each one you'll need two different contrasting colors. So this one here has the pink color. And then this one for the rosette is that more of a um, the standard colors with the blue, red, and yellow. Um, then on this layer is silver card, uh, silver glitter cardstock. And then to support all of this, um, oh, thank you, Debbie. To support it all, um, they suggest using craft board. So that's what I did. So you'll only need um, a sheet of glitter cardstock, any color you want, a couple of um, sheets of patterned, contrasting patterned paper, and um, a sheet of craft board. I'm using Cricut craft board. I'm going to show you that when we go to cut this. But, um, and then... If you really want to make them uh, fancy, you can put something like this. Now, this is a snowflake that I got. It's like a button. Let me see. Did I keep the top? Yeah. So I got this at, at Joann's a while back, and it's called the Big Bag of Buttons. I thought it was a little expensive, but um, and I hadn't used it in, in a whole lot of things, but you get all of these buttons but if you can't or don't want to you know they come in all different sizes from very small to very large and I'm using like the medium size so and then I also used rhinestones you can use any kind of rhinestones that you want these are the ones that I use they're kind of prisms like a all different colors but they have all different kinds of adhesive rhinestones that are at michael's and joann's and everywhere i'm sure they have them at hobby lobby um and so i just have a whole bunch of these so i was just like okay we'll use rhinestones on these and you don't need to use a rhinestone and then all um all else that you need is um, something to if you want to string them up but I was thinking you know last night they're they're so pretty they would look really good at the top of a of a um, really special gift I think that would look good I was thinking boy these would look really nice hanging from the ceiling but the back isn't very pretty <laughs> so so maybe you'd have to either duplicate it and put like a rosette on either side if you want to hang them up but they would also make a good wall hanging as well or in your office or something like that so let's get started on these so this is a very easy project pretty much to understand and to do so find it in uh, Cricut Design Space projects and then you can just hit customize and you will be brought to your canvas um, so we're going to replace that. We're brought to your canvas and you will see that there are actually three different sizes as I as I mentioned so here's the smallest there's medium and this is large and let me just hide the small and medium just simply because, whoops, where are we? Okay, but we'll just focus on one. They're essentially the same idea. So let's ungroup this so you can see. So we've got these four strips and they have um, scoring. This is all that what that indicates is scoring. So now that means that the joy wouldn't, 
necessarily be able to do this. However, we have a, um, I think it's Terry in our joy group that is a whiz at uh, changing joy, um, changing regular projects to joy projects. And she has suggested that you could switch these lines to drawing and then score them yourself, which I think is a fabulous idea. Um, and also don't think, well, I don't have a maker, so I don't have a scoring wheel. That's okay. You can also use the scoring stylus if you have an explore, or you can just use the scoring stylus if you have the maker too. And I can show you how to change that out. Now, there's also this little circle that's cut out from this back piece and when I should show you this so here is our actual glitter snowflake and you'll see you have these two circles and then two exact snowflakes well this one here the one in the back is going to be cut from the craft board so um, craft board if you don't know what it is it's just a thicker kind of paper um, sort of poster board if you don't have craft board you could use chipboard or poster board or even if you wanted to you could use a thicker card stock it's just um, there to give it some body you know, to make it sort of stiffer. And you could switch it, like not use it. I think it would work, but I think that the rosette's pretty heavy. And so I like the craft board there in the back, okay? So um, so that's what this, this white piece is. And then this red piece is our patterned paper. And you notice that this is the same. So we're going to be cutting out so in this particular instance, this would be our red piece here. And you see that circle on the top? That's also in the red piece, so they match. And then the rosette is from these four pieces that we're going to cut out and use our scoring um, tool with. And then we just put it all together. So um, so it's really, really a simple uh cut in, in my opinion and so when you hit make it and personally you know how I am I usually like to cut things out that are in multiples and this works really well with multiples so I think I was able to get three um on to one sheet of paper um well my two let's try two just so you can see so here's my craft board mat Here's my glitter mat. Here's my patterned paper mat, one of the patterned paper. And here's my rosette, which is done out of the patterned paper. So um, this is how I did them. I did them two at a time. And I'm just going to show you by going forward. We're probably just going to cut out the... Um, the rosette shape because that's the one that is the most... Um, uh, different, a little harder, okay? The rest of the stuff you can cut out just fine um, on your own. So I wanna just show you how this works. And if you are new to the maker and the scoring wheel, that's what I'm going to use here because it's patterned paper. I'm using the 01 here either 01 but if I was using something thicker or uh, fancier like sparkle paper I would use 02 okay um, and I'm going to first put that in now if I wanted to use a scoring stylus because I have an explorer and I want to use a scoring stylus all I need to do um, is choose the scoring stylus as my um, as my tool. Now, if you just have the Explore, then you won't be actually given a choice, but if you have a Maker, you'll be given a choice of the two, okay? So just to kind of let you know that. So this time around, we're gonna use the single scoring wheel because I have my Maker, and then later on, I'm going to need to put the blade in. So let's go ahead and put that in. I'm gonna move you o over. Um, yes, it is, Deborah. It is. I'm going to, uh, let's talk about that in a second. Let me just, um, move you over so you can sort of see what's going on here. I'm putting in, this is the paper.
paper that I'm going to use, have it on my mat, and I'm going to put it in. And then I need to take out my blade with my housing and put in my scoring wheel. Now, um, this usually doesn't come, the scoring wheel doesn't come with your maker. So if you have a brand new maker, um, I think Roslyn said she had a brand new maker. Um, so if you're a brand new maker, this is something that maybe you'd have to buy separately. It's definitely well worth it for the maker. But if you didn't have a maker, you can use this. This is called a scoring stylus. You see, it's kind of like a pen, but it doesn't have ink. And it works by um, depressing the paper, which is exactly what the scoring wheel this this does um this one happens to go a lot deeper than the um than the stylus and that cannot be a number of people ask me can this be changed uh how it goes down it really can't because um it's just meant to go up and down but in this case the scoring wheel has these cogs on it it's part of the adaptive tool system so they can adjust the pressure and that's what makes the indent a little bit deeper. Not to say that if you have an explore um, and and a, sty a stylus that you you can't do scoring. You absolutely could do scoring, but um, you do it with the stylus, okay? Um, but it does come separately. And when you are doing a project, you always score first. Um, yes, that's right, David. Yeah. And whenever you're putting something in your clamp A, you need to support that clamp when you're putting it in, whether it's a stylus or, um, whether it's a pen or whatever else that you're going to put in there. I don't think there's much else you can put in, in clamp A. A, a lot of pens, a lot of different pens. So right now what you'll see, and if you can see real close, the actual scoring wheel, the little tip is moving around and doing the scoring. I, not terribly sure why it does that. I'm sure it has some engineering uh, reason. Um, and so just so that you know. But if you are in the in the hopeful, I'm going to get a maker for Christmas, um, and you do a lot of paper, uh, a lot of paper crafting. The scoring wheel is so wonderful with the maker. So if something, um, if it's something that you do, you're going to get a maker and you're going to um, uh, do a lot of paper, tell Santa Claus you want the scoring wheel. And yes, the scoring wheel comes with two tips. Um, and sometimes you can buy them with both of the tips and the tips are 01 and 02 and then you get um, the actual adaptive tool thing and then you put the tips on here okay so um, that's what it's doing and then when it's done I have to take out um, take out that scoring wheel and put back my blade with the housing so there's my blade with the housing and it's just about done it says it's a hundred percent scoring on my screen but it's clearly not done so um let's just give it another second until we get done so um let me just while i'm i bought some buttons mixed up there were some snowflakes yeah there you go mittens would work Okay, so the difference between the O1 and the O2 tip, and I can actually show you the O2 tip. Okay, so this is the O2 tip, and looking up really closely, it actually has two discs here, um, and the O1 has only one disc. And the difference is that this actually creates kind of like a divot in your paper, and the reason you would use O2 over O1 is if your paper was fancy like glitter, um, sparkle paper, shimmer paper, even card star, um, card craft star, Blah. craft board, anything thicker or sort of fancier than regular cardstock. So let me take out my scoring wheel and we can talk a little bit about it as I as it does the rest of the cutting. Whoops. Okay, so here we go. Let's 
going to get it going. So this is the scoring wheel with both the O1 and the O2, okay? So O2 is used for things like glitter paper, as I said, thicker things, craft board, um, uh, sparkle paper. O1 is used for everything else. So there's the O1 tip. It has one, and it's not sharp. It's just, uh, it's the pressure that it, that the machine puts on it to create the divot in the paper. And the reason why you want two divots or two lines in the paper to create a divot is because, um, it won't crack. So, like, you know how sometimes glitter cardstock can cr crack when it's folded? That's what this would, would prevent, okay? So that's the difference there. And this, let me just show you what you end up with. So this is the um, scored piece that um, you do have to fold them at the score. So it's either way, you're gonna have to fold them. So we're going to do for each ornament, we're gonna do these four pieces and we're gonna um, string them together and then we're going to turn them into the rosette, okay? Um, oh yes, Annette, it's, I think personally for my maker, I use the, um, the scoring wheel out of all of the all of the tools, well, now that we have foil, maybe not because I use the foil too. But out of all of the adaptive tools from the adaptive tool system, I use the scoring wheel um, the most. There are some other really kind of fun, funky blade things, tips that you can use, but I have used um, the scoring wheel uh, much more and as a paper as a paper crafter. Okay, so here, here's what we just did. So here are these little pieces. Let me just take one off so you can see. So here, here's what you end up with. See the scoring there? And then what you're going to do is just fold these at the scoring like this. That's what the scoring does. It allows you to fold the paper quite easily and nicely. Um, you can do this by hand. Um, in fact, rosettes were being made all over the world uh, by hand before the Cricut came in. So, you, you know, if this is something you wanted to do by hand, this part by hand, you can certainly do it. And that's what I mean about the joy, um, being able to do it. So let's put these together. I have a whole bunch all cut out. So I want to show you how to put them together here. So let's do, hmm, let's see. I have one over here that I'm going to show you. This is the big one. All right. So here are four pieces of uh, the rosette. And I already folded them all. Here's that craft board piece that I cut out. And then to cover the craft board, here's the paper that I used. And you see this was double-sided paper. So I'm using both sides of that paper, which I kind of think is really fun. So this would go on to the craft board. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then here's our, um, our glitter piece. I've got my little um, snowflake. And actually it's going to go like this. Maybe that snowflake is, might be a little big. I don't know. So um, so let's first glue this piece on, and then we'll put together the rosette. Okay. So uh, glue, regular glue works for this. If you're new to crafting, you know that I have, um, I now have two favorite glues. This one that I'm using is called Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. Um, and that glue is available uh, on Amazon, this Barely Art. And then I also use, uh, for some reason it's a little bit, the nozzle's a little clogged, which is what I like about this. It has a good, um, it has a good way to unstick the nozzle. And it has a very, very, um, very nice tip to it. Now, um, listen, you can use any glue. It, 
any liquid glue you want to use. You could even use, if you wanted to, um, you could use like a spray adhesive. I don't recommend it because it's so messy. But, um, and here's the other one that I use, right? But the important thing about glue is you want to um, not use a lot of it because um, it's messy when you use a lot of it. And that's like a rookie mistake is when you start, you know, having glue seeping out between <laughs> between the layers of your um of your pieces so just a dot you can always go back and put more on but you can't it's not easy to take it off so just use a little bit okay so here is my backing and I'm just going to match it up with the top piece and I'm rushing. You know, you guys will do better when um, when you're doing it because, you know, you're not going to be rushing. Okay. So there is our back piece. We just need to put that aside while we work on the rosette. So we've got four pieces of the rosette, and I mentioned that you're going to fold them all. And what we're going to do is we're going to make one long strip. Okay, now um, I use glue. Now, in the past, when I've made rosettes, I've used uh, a glue gun. I'm not a huge fan of glue guns, so I've never really um, liked that. So what I found out with this project is that this art glitter glue really works well for making... Um, making rosettes. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So here all I'm doing is gluing the end of one to the beginning of the other and just overlapping like that. See that? So now I have a full strip of these folds. And this theory applies to any time you're going to be doing rosettes, whether you have this nice scalloped edge or something else, okay? So then I'm going to refold them, and I want to make sure where they're glued that it's it's folding the correct way. It might mean that you have to, like, make that fold go the opposite way. So here we go. See how this one, it was bent like this, but we're going to actually rebend it to this way. And we're just going to make like an accordion. And here's another, we're at that edge. It's getting a little bit bulky, but that's okay. We just want to make sure we make a really good accordion. Okay. So there's our accordion. It's all going, all the all the uh, folds are going mountain valley, mountain valley. And and I, I only mention that because, let me see if I can show you the one that I didn't do that with. Mm. I thought I had a problem with one of the, yeah, right here. So here I, I didn't fold it correctly. And so I ended up with like a little, it's such a small problem. Nobody will probably notice, but I did. So I just thought I'd point it out to you. Okay, so now that you have them all going the right way, we're going to take each end. And this is a little tricky. We're going to take each end and we're going to glue them together like this. It's okay if it's if it's in a ring. Um, that's fine. So we're going to put them together like this. All right, you wanna make sure it's really well together um, because of the next step. So I'm just gonna give it a moment, a moment to sort of become one with the glue, to become one with the paper there. All right, so now we have our ring where we've put it together. This is the little bit of a difficult uh, step. So what I wanna do is I wanna get my circles ready. My circle and this is my um, glitter piece, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to 
it, whether it depends on which end you put in there, but you're going to, I want the blue to show. So I'm going to move all of my pieces down. So they're folded flat. Now I know this is a little awkward, but you can do it. All right. Um, and you may have to do it more than once to get it just right, but you're going to fold it in like this. And there's your rosette. Woo! We got it. Now, this does take more than two hands sometimes. So if you had a had a friend to help, that would be good. I find that when I am doing this, sometimes I have to, you know, lift my hand up and reform it. But this is what we're doing. See that? But if I let it go, and I, I'm going to let it go, this is what could happen, all right? So don't don't get frustrated if this happens. It's just the kind of thing that it's just you need to um, you need to be patient with the paper because it's paper, you know. So here is the bottom, and what we're going to do is we're going to put quite a bit of glue. This goes against my regular glue um, thought process, but this is so that I can avoid using a glue gun. So if you use a glue gun, you don't need to do this, but we're going to take it and we're going to place it over that circle and hold it. Try to get that circle in the middle, but at first it's going to be difficult and you will have to hold it. Um, oh, okay. You put it in a cookie, what? D, what a great idea. <laughs> wow, I love that idea. You put it in a cookie cutter, so it's, yeah, smart move. I just hold it with my hand, but boy, that's a great idea. And you want to just make sure your little circle is down in there real good. And if it helps to do the top part, it does help me. If it does help to do the top part, too, because we're basically making a rosette sandwich here. And so we're going to put some glue here and take our snowflake and put it in there and that will hold it there. Hi Babs. Hi J Gracie. Hi Gracie, how are you? Um so we're making a little sandwich here. So now I can pick it up. You see that's the back, that's the front, and we're just holding it until it's all stuck good. All right? It might take a minute or two and, you know, you'll take more patience with it than I'm doing because I want to finish it up. But um, that's it. After a few, I can see that it's going to like undo if I let it go. And I love the idea of putting it in something like a round thing to sort of hold it together because you're basically training the paper to stay in an unnatural form. form. Okay, so then once you have that done, you're going to take your back and you can either, it doesn't matter, you can just put some glue on the back and we're going to affix that right to the back like this. Then we've got our circle. I can do it either this way or this way because of the pattern. I think I'll do it this way so it, it goes like this light, dark, light. So there we go. And then we take our snowflake and put it on top. And I just glued these. And again, if you are comfortable with the glue gun, it does work real well to use, um, to do rosettes with glue gun. Not going to lie. However, um, I don't like glue guns. And so I try to avoid them at all costs. And so I wanted to show you a different way to do this if you didn't like them either. Okay. So it's sort of connecting. And then I'm just going to take my, um, 
my little rhinestones and I could choose any of the rhinestones. I've been using this, these ones, and I am going to, I want to just point out for this particular one, these are bigger than these. So I'm going to use a bigger rhinestone on this, on every other, and then the smaller on the smaller pieces. So I've got different sizes here. These are the big ones. I hope I have enough. One, two, three, four, five. I think I do. One, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, so here's the big one. Now, I don't know about you, but I do like to put a little dot, even if there's an adhesive for um, the rhinestones, even if it's there, I like to put a dot there just to kind of give it assurance that it's going to... Um... Oh, Bren, are you here? Bren, I think I saw Bren. Who's having a birthday? This one is the biggest one. Yes, Susan. Um, it is the bigger of all three. So the biggest of all three. I'm going to show you the different sizes in a second. Real up close. All right. So, But they all go together the exact same way. And personally, I think rosettes, when they're bigger, are easier to work with. There's a little more paper, but um, small rosettes can be a little bit frustrating to work with. And if you wanted to hang on, I can show you how to do the small one, but I don't want to take up too much time either. I've got to go do my baking. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I still haven't made one pie um, for tomorrow. Okay, so I'm putting all of the um, all of the rhinestones on. Again, you'll be careful, more careful than me. I'm just slapping them on there just so you can see what um, what needs to get done. All right, and one, last one. There you go. And that is it, my friends. Isn't it beautiful? I can show you the small ones too. Now, if you want to hang these, the what I did um, to hang them is, let me just get my string. So I, I have this thin ribbon that I cut about, I'd say about a foot in length. So let me get my scissors and I cut a foot in length. And I did this. Uh, this is what I did anyway. Bren, it, can I tell everybody your good news? Bren sent me a uh, sent me an email. I don't know if you guys know this, but Bren and I are um, are the same in that we both have been working on solving our cancer problem, resolving our cancer. Um, Bren has cancer. As, or was diagnosed with cancer as well, and I got a message from her just. Uh, yesterday or the day before that she was given the um the all clear on her cancer um so congratulations bren i jumped the gun i'm sorry but congratulations bren um yay yeah we're both cancer free isn't that awesome we obviously we both had really good uh doctors but also i think crafting and being among friends helps so <laughs> so here we go this is what I did for a ribbon closure I did go up one of the of the sides of the snowflake and glued to the back here again you'll do this a lot better than I um, and I actually used tape to hold it in place until it glued in place so let me just show you what I mean There it is with the tape. Um, I could take the tape off now if I wanted to, just so I could hold it. But I found that um, you really do need to support it on one of these like legs of the snowflakes or one of the things of the snowflakes um, so that when you're holding it up, it it is like going to not fold over if that makes sense okay so this is the large one this is the medium wait 
yeah, this is the medium one. And this is the small one. And I can show you, you guys said you wanted to see the small one and I have them all cut out. Here we go. So here's the small one. See, I told you I was cutting out a bunch. So here's the one that I cut out. Actually, I think, yeah, this one here, like this. Okay, so same thing holds true. I'm going to just uh, glue the the uh, card craft board to the cardstock, whatever side of the cardstock you want to do. You'll do all this um, much more um, neatly than I'm doing it, but I just want to show you so you can see. All right, to so put that aside. Then we take our four pieces of rosette, right? You see there's one, two, three, four, and then we glue them together like this, and then we fold them so that they are accordion, all really good accordion style back forth back forth mountain or valley fold so there you go you're making a like a little package and then we're going to turn it around and we're going to glue one end to the other like this make sure it's on there really really good so that we have a ring all right I hope that it's stuck there. And then we're going to work on a flat surface and you can either pull out or push in whichever way that you want to do. So I have a tendency to push in, but you can pull them out. And this is the frustrating part. Don't get frustrated with yourself. So just keep doing it. Stick to it. You'll do it. There we go. See that? And then while you're holding it with one hand, gonna take that circle, put a little bit of glue there. You can lift it up if you want. I don't think that's what I'll do. Lift it up. Maybe not a good idea. Okay, put it on this circle in the back. Yep. Hold, hold, hold until it catches. And then here's my um, snowflake. I'm going to put the snowflake on the front. Right? And then where's my little circle? Here's my little circle. Is that my circle? Yep, that's my circle. I'm going to put that on there too. All right, and let me get one of my little snowflakes. Yep, that's a good one. Good size. Give it a little bit of glue. Sorry if that's a little off camera. Okay, and here is, boom. All right. There's my sandwich, my rosette sandwich. And then I'm just simply going to glue it onto the backing and decorate it with my rhinestones. That's it. Isn't it easy? Um, it's so easy. And you don't have to use this snowflake. I did get them at Joann's and I'll just show you them again. Um, it's called Favorite Findings Big Bag of Buttons. You don't have to get it at Joann's, but this is what I got in there. They're all different size, and they are indeed buttons. You could use, if you have a big rhinestone and you want to put it in there, you could use that as well, um, or anything you really wanted, or nothing at all. You don't have to put that on there. 
another button of some sort that matched. Whatever you'd like to do, I'm sure will look really nice. And then of course, I just put the rhinestones on these pieces for this one. So I only used five rhinestones for this one, but you don't have to use the rhinestones either. So that is our, um, that is our show today. The um, snow flake rosette ornament set. Remember, you can pick this up in the projects area of design space. Go to projects and choose um, Christmas and it's right there and just pull it all into your design space uh, canvas and cut it out. It's, it's simply craft board patterned paper and a little bit of glitter cardstock which I know a lot of people have all of those things at home so um so they're really fun I'm going to I don't know you can't see over here but I've got like a bunch already cut out and I'm going to whip up a bunch in all three sizes and um and put them on my Christmas tree and when I get them done I will show you but it's just kind of a showstopper if you ask me thank you everyone um thank you everyone for coming today i am so thankful for you um this has been a challenging year for everyone but um in me me i feel like in particular just having to go through cancer treatment so i really appreciate you um every morning being able to come and say hello and um and work on a project this is really has kept me going so i i'm so thankful for you i really am and i keep you all in my prayers and um so happy to have met you <clears throat> this year Thank you. And I hope you, if you are American, I hope you're enjoying your Thanksgiving holiday. And also to my Canadian friends, happy Thanksgiving belated. And we will see you all again on Friday. Remember, no show tomorrow because of the holiday. But we'll, um, you can always catch any of the videos on my YouTube channel. Um, and remember, they're all there. Thank you, everyone, and congratulations, Bren. I know that feeling, and and I'm just so, I'm so happy for you. Really, really, I was, I actually shouted out loud when I when I when I read that email. Um, I was like, yes, yes. So. Thank you, everyone. Um, I hope you have a really wonderful day. Yeah, it will be different than usual, but it will it will still be Thanksgiving and just, you know, enjoy life because it's so precious and everything that we have. So thanks, everyone. We'll see you again on the other side of Thanksgiving. All right. Love you all. Have a great um, holiday. Take care.